Honor and tribute paid to the memory of the Kentucky State Trooper who died almost 28 years ago. A big spike in gas prices, but they aren't done rising yet. Now you can save some money though on gas this summer. We need to look at ways to ensure the viability of the institution long term. Starting this fall, big changes are coming to Midway University. We'll WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Firefighters are battling a massive fire in Lexington right now. They tell us that two homes have caught on fire on Stansbury Cove off of Hayes Boulevard. Our Victor Fuente is live for us at the scene with the breaking details. And Victor, have you been able to talk to anyone on scene yet? Well, I've been able to get some basic information. Firefighters have been here for about an hour. They tell me flames have actually damaged two homes and they were worried about it spreading to three others. We'll step out of the way and show you what they're dealing with here. The call went out to just after 430. The home here on Stansbury Cove was burning, and at one point that fire was so intense, firefighters had to evacuate. They tell me it started in one home but spread to a second. That fire has gone into the attic of that second home. Firefighters tell me neighbors saw a woman running from that first home. They believe everyone got out safely. There are four homes near this that firefighters were worried about. Most of them have melted siding and some damage from that fire. They continue to do overhaul as they work to put out these flames. we will bring you more information as it becomes available. Live in Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. Very, very active scene there. We'll have to keep that situation up. Bit. Victor, thank you. He was shot and killed while on duty nearly three decades ago, and his murder still goes unsolved. But not forgotten. Someone shot Johnny Edrickton while he was on patrol on Kentucky 80 near London. Today, he was honored at a memorial service in his hometown of Campbellsville. Phil Pendleton is talking to Edrickton's family. It's our top story, 530. For almost three decades, they've come out to the cemetery to remember. You know, even though it's been 28 years, we always have the hope of it being solved. Barbara Curtis's brother died on December 20th, 1988. Police say he had conducted a traffic stop on Kentucky 80 west of London. I know that there's always more tips that come in, and, and we would love to, to get this solved and, and know that, um, um, that we have some answers. Until then, every year during Police Officers Memorial Week in May, they come out. The men in gray and blue, family to pay honor and tribute to another fallen officer. And as of today, 35 more have died this year. Johnny Edrington was 34. His wife was expecting their daughter, Callie, who attends the annual service with her mother. She never had the opportunity to know her father. And for her to see that we still celebrate his life, and remember his death, I think is crucial. Police say they hope services like this one will jog a memory, cause someone to come forward with a crucial piece of evidence to put the puzzle together. And I think we will find the answer. It's just gonna take time and, and, um, and patience and, um, and dedication from the, the KSP. In Taylor County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Trooper Edrington had worked for London State Police Post there for just three years when he was killed. Voters needed to bring an umbrella with them today to the polls. It's been a soggy and chilly election day. Yes, it has. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look at the forecast. Chris? Yeah, guys, it continues to be ugly out there through the evening as we focus on that Tuesday evening forecast with rain that will be actually increasing again. The temperatures, I can't say the same for They're going to hold steady generally 52 degrees right now into central Kentucky. Lexington, Frankfort at 52, and it's raining both areas. Kind of damp, drizzly at times in between those showers. Uh, London, congrats, you're up to 65. Jackson, 56. How about 73 Middlesboro, 49 into northern Kentucky around the Maysville area. That's a front that is draped across the area. What we are dealing with, some lighter rains now across parts of central Kentucky. Even where you aren't seeing some green, you've got some drizzle and some very light showers beginning to take place. Heavier rains are off to our west. That will roll on in here late this evening into the overnight. Temperatures for the better part of the evening with showers around right around 50 degrees. March showers and chill. That's right, I said March. I know it's only May, but it is doing its best impersonation for the month of March. Guys, a little break in the action when I come back in a few minutes.
Chris, thank you. State police are looking for the person responsible for setting a home on fire. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Powell County. Troopers say someone broke into the home on Urban Road in Clay City yesterday afternoon. A weapon and some cash was stolen. State police believe someone set the house on fire to cover up the theft. There's a thousand dollar reward for information leading to an arrest and conviction. And in Boone County, plans to rehabilitate an historic building damage in a fire is now moving forward. The Rabbit Hatch General Store burned in February. Contractors say rehabbing the building will cost more than $200,000. So far, $180,000 has been raised. The goal is to keep it on the National Register of Historic Places. The contractor estimates restoration will take about two years. Gas prices are trending up in the state. You may have noticed around Lexington today, we saw prices as high as $2.45 a gallon. The AAA says that the price at the pump is still about 80 cents per gallon cheaper than a year ago. Because of the difference, experts say that more people will hit the roads this year than in the past 11 years. Gas prices are, are, are peak in Memorial Day. So they're, they're usually the highest they're going to be for the summer on Memorial Day. And then they sort of level out and maybe get a few cents cheaper as the summer goes on. AAA has some tips on how to save on gas as you travel this summer. Shop around, look on the internet, internet for the cheapest gas. Buy gas away from the interstate. The closer you are to the highway, the higher the price. And finally, AAA says if you're traveling, you'll find gas cheaper in the Midwest and in the South. Midway University is planning some big changes in the coming months. For the first time in its history, the university will allow men to enroll in its daytime undergraduate programs, and men will be able to live on campus next year. Mike Linden tells us why the university is becoming a co-educational institution. Since its founding in 1847, Midway University has only allowed women to attend as full-time undergraduate students. This fall, that's going to change. After 169 years is that the Board of Trustees voted unanimously last week to move to full co-education. Men have been allowed to take online and evening classes at Midway for nearly 30 years, but now they'll be able to be full-time undergraduate students and soon even more. Eventually in 2017, they can live on campus and they will be able to be part of athletic teams. While Marsden says allowing men to become full daytime students is a big change, he says there won't be any big changes coming to campus itself. For now, the university does not have any plans to add additional residence halls or athletic department buildings. According to Marsden, this decision is looking toward the future of the institution. Times have changed, challenging times for higher education. And we need to look at ways to ensure the viability of the institution long term. Even though the school year is over, faculty say the majority of students agree with the board. There was a student survey that was done just this past semester, an unsolicited student survey, and it was overwhelmingly positive. The students were in favor of moving to a co educational institution. In Woodford County, Mike Linden, WKYT. University President John Marston said according to data collected by the Board of Trustees, only 2% of high school women seek out single-sex education. This past weekend, a moving tribute as thousands of people gathered in Washington, D.C. to honor police officers who died in the line of duty last year, including six from law enforcement here in Kentucky. Frank from Willisburg has our good question. I'm curious as to why the name of Officer Jason Ellis, who was ambushed at the Bloomfield exit of the Bluegrass Parkway a few years ago, was not included in the recent ceremonies and story regarding Kentucky police who lost their lives. Frank, his name was not included this past weekend during the ceremony because he died in 2013. The six Kentucky police officers whose names were etched into stone at the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial died last year. The six included Officer Daniel Ellis of the Richmond Police Department who was shot to death last November. Officer Jason Ellis was honored two years ago. WKYT did some stories on this. As we reported at that time, his name is permanently engraved on that panel, 16W Line 29 to be exact, of the granite walls. Thanks for your good question. To submit a good question, send an email to goodquestion at wkyt.com. Still to come on WKYT News at 5.30, they're too young to vote in the primary, but dozens of students got a lesson on elections today.
I'm Bill Bryant. Kentucky voters only have a few more minutes to get to the polls as the country watches for the results of the Kentucky primary. The bottom line is on the way. Presidential candidates Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders are battling over the bluegrass. And Lexington Mayor Jim Gray hoping for a win in today's primary. Bill Bryant breaks down the races in the bottom line. Good evening. As folks all over the country watch for the results, the polls will start closing in just a few minutes in Kentucky's primary. Voters in the central time zone will be voting for another hour. Hillary Clinton's team pulled out the stops to try to win Kentucky, which she easily carried in 2008. This time, she was coming off tough losses in two Kentucky border states, Indiana and West Virginia. Clinton made several stops herself, including a rally in Lexington last night. Her husband, former president, President Bill Clinton also campaigned hard here in Kentucky, as did some other surrogates. Bernie Sanders also campaigned in the Commonwealth and has run TV ads. He is hoping for wins in Oregon and Kentucky today to demonstrate momentum heading toward the national convention, even though his chances of actually catching Clinton are very slim. Lexington Mayor Jim Gray is hoping to win the Democratic U.S. Senate nomination in a crowded field. He voted in his home precinct this morning. It includes former Frankfurt Commissioner Celis Wilder, a filmmaker inspired by Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, and Ron Leach, who served multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. On the Republican side, frontrunner Senator Rand Paul is facing two primary challengers, James Gould and Stephen Slaughter. Paul voted by absentee and remained in Washington today. Republican have won every U.S. Senate race in Kentucky since 1998. We'll also be watching some congressional primaries tonight. In the 6th District, Congressman Andy Barr is expecting to be renominated, and the Democrats are choosing a challenger for him. And in the 1st District, James Colmer, who narrowly lost the Republican gubernatorial primary last year, is hoping to resurrect his political career. He faces Mike Pape, a longtime aide to retiring U.S. Congressman Ed Whitfield, Jason Bass, is the Hickman County attorney, and Miles Coffey, Jr., has paid for his campaign from his VA disability check. Republicans are choosing a challenger for Democratic State Representative Rita Smart in the Richmond area. House Speaker Greg Stumbo is facing a primary challenge from Jimmy Rose in the Floyd County area. A loud race in the mountains as Democratic Senate Leader Ray Jones faces Glenn Hammond. And in the Somerset area, Republicans choosing a nominee to replace State Senator Chris Girdler. Bill Bryant, WKYT. Thank you, Bill. School was out today because of the primary, but dozens of students from across central Kentucky still had a chance to have a lesson in elections. As part of the 4-H Youth Development Program, about 40 high school students participated in an election workshop at EKU. They learned about political parties, the presidential nominating process, and voter eligibility. Some of the students told us they're going to Washington, D.C. next year, and today's training will help them on their trip. Coming here, would have, it's a great opportunity to learn about the system that we use, and I feel like that if I didn't know these things, I would feel kind of helpless while on the trips. Everyone needs to be informed about our political system and our government, and I've learned that a lot of kids my age don't really know anything that's going on, and this is just a good opportunity. It is a great opportunity. The students will be going to D.C. in January, where they will attend several inauguration festivities. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. And on this election day, I don't know that uh, too many of us are winners in terms of the actual weather out there. It is ugly across central and eastern Kentucky. A lot of low clouds, uh, some patchy fog, drizzle, showers, that ugly view. Out in front of the station, Hamburg Pavilion in the distance, you see the drizzle and the light showers coming down. 52 degrees right now. Humidity's way, way up there, 89%. Winds are coming out of the northeast at 10 miles an hour. That is a kind of textbook definition of a raw weather day across most areas. I say most because Southern Kentucky. Okay, you're the actual weather winners on this election day. It's 71 Middlesboro, yet only 49 degrees showing up into Maysville. Uh, we're stuck in between across most of central Kentucky. Defender Radar Network rains across parts of the area now, shifting to the east of Interstate 75, at least with some steady showers. But from Frankfurt to Lawrenceburg to, Harris, uh, to the Harrodsburg area and points west, we're going to start to pick up the pace a little bit again as the evening wears on, with more in the way of some rain that is on the way. Your Wednesday forecast, first half of the day, it is soggy out there. 
Temperature into the afternoon will begin to come up a little bit, some rays of sunshine. If you're expecting tomorrow just to be a beautiful day, it's not going to be the case. It's ugly to start, a little better to end. Anything qualifies, though, at this point as better. Thursday, looking good. Nothing going on. Nice day, partly sunny. More rounds of showers and storms back into the weather picture for your Friday. Out and about this evening, the waves of rain will continue to come at us. And by first thing tomorrow morning, most areas could pick up a quick half to three quarters of an inch. This model says here in Lexington, between now and noon tomorrow, we're going to pick up eight tenths of an inch of rain. 57 at noon. Tomorrow afternoon, it's a little cooler now in some of the late afternoon runs with those temperatures. Still, into the 60s with a mostly cloudy sky. Can't rule out an isolated shower at any point tomorrow afternoon. Let's get to Thursday. Thursday's weather is better, albeit chilly to start with low 40s. Look at your afternoon. Temperatures high 60s to low 70s. More importantly, it looks mainly dry as we go into Thursday. Soak that one up Friday. The storms return. Some heavier downpours that'll carry us into the first part of Saturday as well. Once we go into Saturday late into Sunday, Showers become a little isolated in nature during that time. Long range call into next week. Pattern slowly, slowly <laughs> begins to warm up a little bit. Yeah. Mid and upper 70s are normal right now. Yeah. We're barely at 50. Oh. Normally we have our eyes set on Friday, but Thursday's going to have to do Thur this Thurs week for Thursday's sure. Thursday's the pick day, no doubt. Chris, thank you. It looks like we're clear of the two collisions in Lexington. The one on Liberty and Henry Clay is gone now, but we're having an issue now on US 68 Lexington Road in Jessamine County. Uh, they're saying that the road is shut down. 68 is shut down at Lexington Road in Jessamine County because of what they're calling a serious injury collision. That could impact you traveling from Lexington on 68 towards Nicholasville, Wilmore, Harrisburg, in that area. Uh, as far as Nicholasville Road itself is concerned, still 12 to 15 minutes and 75 across the Clays Ferry Bridge. Decent drive time so far. Now back to the studio. They have quite a team. The UK softball team setting its sights on the NCAA. Well, the Cats begin regional play Friday. Expectations are running high. We'll hear from Rachel Lawson. And how about a 30 for 30 on Cal? It is said to be in the works. We'll tell you about it when we come right back with sports. No announcement just yet, but ESPN is preparing a 30 for 30 on John Calipari. Cal biographer and now ESPN PR man David Scott tweeted out that footage from a 30 for 30 about the Kentucky coach made it to the sizzle reel during ESPN's upfront presentation this morning. That's where the networks try to build excitement for the fall. A UK spokesman confirmed that the show doesn't have a title and the only other bit of info they were willing to share at this time is that an ESPN crew began filming the show during the weekend of Cal's induction into the Basketball Hall of Fame. UK is expecting an official announcement from ESPN in the not too distant future. Carl Anthony Towns and the Minnesota Timberwolves will be coming into the KFC Yum Center next fall for a preseason game against the Miami Heat. The date is Saturday, October 15. Tickets will start at 18 bucks. They will go on sale on June 3rd. The Kentucky softball team opens NCAA play Friday. The Cats host Butler at 6 o'clock at John Crop Stadium. The Cats are the number nine overall seed, highest in school history. Coach Rachel Lawson says now that the program is established, expectation levels are running just that much higher. Our seniors want to make sure that they get back. Our seniors wanted to make sure that they had um, 40 wins this season. Um, and so I think that everything is different. Our expectation level is so different than when we were just trying to figure out how to win softball games. We're trying to figure out how to win softball games on an elite level and take us back to where we need to go. So where we are now versus three or four years ago, it's just the mindset of the program is completely different. Lafayette's five-star offensive lineman Jed Wills celebrating a birthday today by releasing his list of top ten schools. And here's the ten. He says in no particular order. Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, LSU, Michigan, Michigan State, Notre Dame, Ohio State, 
and Tennessee. And Kentucky offensive lineman John Toth has been named to the Remington Trophy Spring Watch list. The award is presented annually to the most outstanding center in college football. Toth is one of four returning starters on the Cats' offensive line. The NBA draft lottery is tonight. Carl Towns among the Wildcats, former Wildcats who will be taking part. We'll talk about that in the next half hour. Stay with us.